Good morning. morning. Happy Sunday morning to you all. Just, uh, there's a second collection for the building fund for Good Shepherd Church. Uh, for those who usually go to Good Shepherd, there's uh, a basket for that. Thank you so much. this morning, uh, the beginning and the end is Lord, who throughout these 40 days, and the offertory for me is transfigure us, O oh Lord.
Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ calling us to conversion be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning. It is good to be here. We hear those words in the gospel today with the transfiguration of the Lord. We can also say the same thing as we gather for the Eucharist. It is good to be here. Praise God and to thank Him for this opportunity to embrace the discipline of Lent with our eyes set in heaven, even though our feet are rooted on this, uh, on the trials of this life. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have to do through my fault. Through my fault, through my mysterious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, 
I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Them. 
and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no cooler on earth could reach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Jesus, with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that you are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. They only knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus along with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a patient in a small hospital, so you can't choose your own doctor. And this patient was being wheeled in the operating room, pleaded with a young doctor, Doc, please be gentle with me. This, uh, this is my first time to be operated on. And the surgeon glanced at her and darted out. Don't, uh, no worry, this, this, uh, this is also my first time to be to an operation. You know, up to that time, I don't know if the patient survived. <laughs> and trusting ourselves in the hands of a surgeon is human faith. The spirit of faith is trusting Jesus, who said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God and faith also in me. The glorious, the Lord's glorious transfiguration in this Sunday's Gospel of Mark serve as a spiritual booster to the faith of the disciples to strengthen their faith in the days to come when Jesus would suffer much nailed to the cross and died for us. You know, there will be times when our faith flickers or sometimes even gets extinguished. Because the truth is, our faith as a mountain top peak and low in our lifetime. Big experiences are moments of joy and fulfillment to be like Maybe passing a board exam or a long awaited marriage or a priestly and diaconic ordination or birth of a child. Or for some teenagers, maybe getting a learner's permit to drive. And then the low points of life, maybe adversities like the sudden death of a loved one during this COVID pandemic. Financial crisis, crisis, or serious sickness, even a failed marriage. And when such misfortunes hit us, we can feel discouraged and we can feel abandoned by God. And as a good Christian, we should have the strength to rise from adversity. Trusting in God's help and providence. And I think such was the faith of Abraham in the first reading. His faith was tested when God told him to sacrifice his beloved Isaac. Who would be among us parents willing to sacrifice our child? I 
probably will not be able to do what Abraham was asked. For Abraham it was not only a faithful command but also an affair because Isaac was his beloved son. But then he trusted God. It was just meant to test his faith. But even so, any parent probably wonders as ask themselves, would I have passed the test? How much faith am I expected to have? So how about us? When crisis strikes like the death of a loved one, or maybe a failed marriage or losing a job that support our family, can we hold can we hold on on our faith? Can we bounce back because of our faith? Yes, sometimes we have problems understanding the whys and the wherefores of daily life because we don't know how we are going to resolve the problems that confront us on a daily basis. That is when our faith comes in. All of us have, hopefully, at the moment of experience in our lives. But like Peter, James, and John, we cannot remain there. We have to come down eventually and to face our regular lives here on earth. Aren't we in our own journey of faith? also confused sometimes. Then we ask sometimes how can bad things happen to good people? As we look at the world today we wonder why is there so much hatred? Why there is so much suffering endured by so many? Paul gives us the answer when he writes, He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him, who indeed intercedes for us? And then Paul asks us to be joyful and confident. He said that if God is with us, we can do anything. That when we have problems, when the difficulties of life seem to overcome us, we should think of the glory that awaits those who carry their cross patiently, as our Lord carried His cross for us. In the previous chapter in Mark's Gospel, Jesus asked His disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they replied, John the Baptist, Elijah, or one of the prophets. But when Jesus asked them, Who do they, the disciples, say that I am? Only Peter replied, You are the Messiah. Peter seems to have it right, but like no one else gets it. And God, by showing them the transfigured Jesus and talking to them, let them know who Jesus. Jesus really is. That Jesus is the beloved son. That they should listen to him. You know, I have this, this thought that it is almost like God is yelling at them. So it reminds me of a commercial by one of the cell phone companies years back where the man is asking can you hear me now? God is yelling at them. Can you hear me now? Take the time to really listen to me or my son. Can you hear me now? This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Can you picture God yelling at them? Or yelling at us? I think there are many times in our lives when we are like those disciples. And God is trying to talk to us, but we are listening to Him. How 
we see our lives in death. You say many times that there just isn't enough time for us to do everything we want to do. To listen to everything we need to hear. So God is probably yelling at us from the top of his lungs. But we just can't hear him because we are so frightened. You know, almost always we have our earpods. You know. And how often do we really take time out of our day to listen to what God is telling us? We are only in the second week of man. Maybe we will think about slowing down a little bit during this time. You know, take the time to not only listen to God, but think about what He is telling us to do with our lives. And then act on it. My brothers and sisters, think back to the second Sunday in ordinary time. And Jesus saw these first disciples who wondered about him. Come, and you will see. God never stops in giving each of us an invitation to come and see. So how, how will we respond? This Lenten season is a perfect time to show our faith in Christ. To show Him that we are ready and we are willing to listen to Him and to follow Him. to Christ, our teacher and our head, who came to serve and to do good to all. In humility and confidence, we now pray with these words, Lord, save your people. Lord, save your people. God of mercy, let today be a day rich in good works and a day of generosity to all we need. <laughs> Lord, save your people. From the waters of the flood, you see Noah through the ark. From the waters of baptism, raise up the new life those under instruction, especially our RCI elect and candidates. We pray, Lord, save your people. It's just to serve the needs of others and to be like you who came to serve, but not to be served. We pray, Lord, save your people. For all the gardens in the basket and the foot of the altar in Good Shepherd Church, may they be, be accepted and granted according to God's will, we pray. Lord, save your people. May we live not by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God, we pray. Lord, save your people. Have mercy on all the men, bring them to the vision of your glory. Today we pray especially for Irma McNair, Edwin Nemi, and 
Felix Hossinger, we pray. Lord and Savior, we pray. We pray for the healing of all the sick. We pray, we pray for the dying, especially Jennifer Ortega, the daughter of uh, Lorena Hoffman. We pray to the Lord, save your people. God, our Father, help us to hear your song so that we may find our way to glory. For we ask this through Christ our Lord.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. <clears throat> Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your coming, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself <clears throat> through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you are satisfied. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful, and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite in yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant them by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, and Michael, his assistant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. To look him up with him and eat him in. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Teaching 
we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not at our sins but of the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, Friendly reminder also that uh, the period for nomination for pastoral council is coming to an end. This is the last week, so there's about three or four who have been nominated for this uh, worthy council from Immaculate Conception, and uh, there's about seven or eight uh, nominated by the you know, Good Shepherd in church. So it's a good proportion of nominees from Immaculate Conception, but just think. If you yourself or someone you know could be an asset to this council and help us make important decisions for decisions for the future of the parish, whether it is in the area of liturgy or family life, evangelization, pro-life, or justice and peace, uh, do submit uh, your, their name. Uh, make sure you, you check with them before you uh, put in your nomination. Uh, the yellow sheets, do we have those yellow sheet forms in the back on Roberto? Uh, there should be right. That's it. Correct. So uh, while you have it in your hand, you can either nominate yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> or just wait until somebody else, you know, fills out their name. Yeah, it's, it's whatever, you know. <laughs> the fact that <clears throat> sorry, you are nominated doesn't mean that you will make it. Uh, there are so many vacancies, and uh, we'll discern, and then uh, by lots we take out as many names we, we need to have to fill in the, the vacancies, and uh, your name may be full, your name may not, but so uh, we leave it up to the Spirit through that, through that name. Thank you. Javier. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Javier Espinales. And on Sunday, March 7th, the Knights of Columbus are sponsoring the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center for a Blood Donation Drive. The drive will be held at McCuskey Hall from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center will be testing all blood donations from any COVID-19. Test is free, and the results will be mailed to you in 14 days. If you would like to donate, I will have a sign-up sheet outside the church and you can sign up for a specific time slot. You can also go online for your time slot, see me after Mass, and I can provide you with that website. If you do not want to have a specific time slot, you can always walk in, and they will be more than happy to take you in. Just understand you may have to wait for, uh, you may have to wait. Your precious gift will help save someone's life. Thank you for your time. Third time that he gives this announcement. <laughs> One more time, I swear. It's <laughs> not a blessing. Very faithful. Let us stand. Don't forget to, yeah, in order to improve your Lenten journey, check us out on our website. And you can either log on to our online Bible study or Deacon Harvey's uh, daily 
uh, reflection for the season of Lent. Uh, more information about the pastoral council is there on the website for you know candidates uh, qualifications and um, also the stations of the cross. We are having them at six thirty in church. If you don't make it in person, you can always follow us on the not on Twitter or Facebook, but on um, the script is on our website. And I think it's um, it's a very good script. It, it, hopefully, it will help you with your um, prayer life during Lent. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Fall down with a blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O oh Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever.